What's up, George? What's going on tonight? We're going to be talking to him, and uh, we're also going to be talking about characters and stories on our Get Your Med segment, so check that out. I know a lot of characters with a whole lot of stories. Let's get it! We are the only show for independence all around, Give it Platform, spread your word all over town. Cast the craze is the place to promote to your fans with the dream of Medina and Santa Crazy Man. Subscribe to our show and never miss an episode. It's time to get your meds. Listen to us on the go. Updated every week. We never miss a day. Join the squad. Come on in. It's time to cast the craze. If you are an independent, cast the craze. Making moves on your own, cast the craze. On your grind in the streets, cast the craze. Join the movement. Catch the craze! Yeah, George, we did it again. Come on now. Now you want to do it. Catch the craze. Welcome to Catch the Craze Podcast. I am your host with the most Sam, the crazy man fair, and I am with George, the dreamer, Medina, what's happening? Oh, you my the, goodness gracious. You let, that, you let that thing rock. I don't. I can't even hear it, but I like that. I like that. What's going on, dog? I, I like it a lot. I like it a lot. What is happening? Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Catch the Craze. I believe this is wow. August 20th, if my memory serves me correct, because, you know. Jace, it day. is. It's August 20th, and we but have a special guest on. August 20th on Catch the Craze, we have Jeff Weber, who is the creator of Bug Hunt. So we're going to be talking to him about his book today. No, we have and Vernon Smith. Uh, what's that? We have Vernon Smith on tonight. Vernon Smith. It's a big, big foot. Oh, did I get the wrong email? Oops. <laughs> Oops. That, you didn't hear my, you, you didn't hear what, the, the opening? No. <laughs> There's a, see, proof that you didn't listen. Proof. Um, okay, so who, who who is the guest today? Vernon Smith. Vernon Smith. Yes, Don't have any information on Mr. Smith. Yes, we got, it's Bigfoot. Uh, um. Mm. Right here, it's Vernon Smith, Bigfoot Frankenstein, uh, and he is an artist and creator. There you go. So that's who we have on the show today, <laughs> not Jeff Weber. I'm sorry, Jeff. I'm sure we're going to have you on the show at some point. It is just not today. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so we have uh, Vernon Smith, and so he'll be on the show today. We're going to be talking to him about his book. So, you know, that's going to be interesting. Yeah, I don't know where you get Jeff Weber from. Um, well, I got an email from you. That's where I got it from. And it was for tonight? Uh, yeah. Really? It's all good. It's all good, dog. We carry on. We carry, we move forward. Uh, but the topic will be characters today. Yes, we will be yes. talking about characters today on uh, Get Your Meds. Yes. And so that's going to be happening. But uh, but what's going on, brother? It's uh, August 20th, so do we want to go in the news or do we want to get into some of the stuff that's going on in your life? I mean, I don't know what's going to be happening by August 20th, but uh, maybe we go into some indie news. Let's uh, get an indie news because you got me confused. In other news, we have clones, we got body snatchers, we got Vernon (laughs) switching up with Jeff. It's crazy stuff. It's bananas, man. It's yes, bananas. It's pe- anyway, it's don't bananas. worry about it. By the time this airs, we would have figured it out, and yes. this is all just going to be fun and games. Oh, Jeff is um on the 27th. There you go. Next week. Jeff will be on next week. <laughs> so this week, however, however. we have Vernon Smith yes. and uh, his Bigfoot. Uh, what's the Bigfoot? Frankenstein. Frankenstein comic book. Okay, cool. Hey, I apologize. So this was going to happen. You're going to hear... Hey George, what are we having a show today? And we're gonna, and I'm gonna say it's Jeff Weber, <laughs> and uh, creator of Bug Hunt, and let's get it. And then all of a sudden, it's gonna be somebody completely different on the show. So, so, so mighty, but we, yeah, we, we figured it out. You know, it was funny because I was probably, I was putting, probably putting my absolute in my salsa water and orange juice at the time you were saying it. So I didn't, I didn't hear it. Oh, so, and you job. know what? And normally Drinking Herb catches that. Herb, 
Herb, Come on. Herb's, Herb's Herb's time. Kicking with you. Herb's I've been kicking with you, bro. Is it? What did you he want? Can't. He can't <laughs> do it. Can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But but uh but let's see. So what do we got? We went into indie news already. I don't even know. I ain't yes, here yes, we did. So okay, indie news. So it is August twentieth, which means next weekend is Indian Con. Indian Con. Indian Con is coming and it's happening real, real fast. It's, now, it's happening. Indian Con is the con for creatives. You can get free tickets for the show. They don't cost a thing. You can just go on there, get a, yourself a digital access bag, uh, badge, a little digital swag bag, and uh, access to panels and stuff. But for twenty five dollars, you can get a digital ticket, a digital Indian crate that will include digital comics, wallpapers, special offers from the exhibitors at the show, which carries a $100 value, and you get one entry into a VIP raffle of some cool stuff, plus access to VIP events. Yes. For 50 bucks, you get the VIP 50. Max. Max. Now, the VIP Max gives you a physical ambient crate. So you're going to get some physical comic books. Um, wallpapers, you know, obviously for your computer, but you're going to get those comics and you're going to get some also some special offers from exhibitors, but they're all going to be something that you are going to receive in the mail. Five entries to the VIP raffles, not just one, but five, and access to private post events, so events after the con. Now, this is a virtual con, and these tickets are 25 and 50, but if you use our code uh, during checkout, if you type in CDC321, 4321. I'm giving you the wrong one. CDC 4321. Then you will get 10% off your purchase of tickets. So make sure you get on there. Make sure you go and check out NBN Con, the Con for Creatives, the virtual show 28th and 29th. The virtual. We're be doing a panel as well, Sam and I. So check it, check it, check it out. Can't freaking wait. Yes. And you, you just got you just got some bling. Uh, my social media has um, been blowing up. Oh, snap. Also, nope. thank you, everyone, who supported uh, Forbidden and made it a success. We should be getting that stuff out to you, hopefully, as soon as the funds come in. I'm going to guess that they're probably not in yet. Negative. So, um, it usually takes yeah. two weeks from the end of the campaign to reconcile. Right. So it takes them a week to reconcile. So yep. they give the backers seven days to get, to get their funding in order. Um, and then um, once they collect it, then it's seven days to process all the payments, take their fees, and then um, then they send us a notice saying, hey, you should be seeing an Indian bank within 24 hours. So it's usually about yeah. 14 days from the end of the campaign that I get uh, the money in the, in the bank. That's right. So, yeah, so that's that's in progress. But thanks, everyone, for for your pledges and your support of Forbidden. Prohibido. That, that, was, that was very, very awesome of you. Awesome sauce. Uh, also... In August, I wanted to just let you guys know that I have put my book, Rust 5377, it's in Webtoons, and the first episode uh, premiered at the beginning of the month. I'm putting out the second episode in November. I'm going to do it every two months. So make sure you go to webtoons.com. Look at that. Doing big things, man. Doing big I'll things. Hey, listen. I hear I hear duties coming. I hear duties coming to to, to webtoons. Uh, I don't know. There's rumors. Don't so stop. We'll get it. Get it. <laughs> do the prayer. Do the prayer. Wow. Yeah, so and, duty and, is coming, but uh, <laughs> but uh, duty's <laughs> Duty Brown, wow! <laughs> yeah, so uh, nice. yeah, dude, the Doodster is uh, yo, the little Doodster, he's got, he got, he got he's, life, he's bro. Coming. He's, he's coming. coming back, baby. You can't yes. keep a green guy down. No, bro. you can't. You know, it's you not easy being you green. Can't do it. You so can't do it. yeah, so um, I'm gonna wait till I land in Texas. So as of this, the twentieth, um, this episode, um, that means. I'll be coming. I'm be, I'm back from Texas in New Jersey, selling my current home. That means I already, because uh, I went out to Texas already. I'm looking in the future based on the timelines. So um, I would have been back to yesterday uh, for this, uh, and this show is airing. So this is all pre-recorded. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So Duty will be making a comeback, and yeah, same similar to George, who will be debuting on on Webtoons. Every you know. Uh, reached, for some reason, Facebook turned Duty's fan page into a group. I don't know how that happened. I don't know why that happened. They didn't send me a notice. I mean, they sent me a lot of emails, and so I delete all of them. 
Um, I don't read them. <laughs> so they could have said, hey, we're converting you into... Because they, they forced me to, to create a business account. Oh, really? Because the ads I was running. And so they mm. made me go create a business account. So I didn't have a choice. They wouldn't let me run an ad anymore without having a business account. So I had to do that. Then they stopped me from running ads if I didn't add two-level authentication. I was like, they forced you to do all these things. That's because they wanted my phone number. Forced. They wanted to make sure my... Oh, it's a whole lot of stuff with Facebook, yo. It's the it's just crazy. I don't, I'm not going to use crazy terms like Gina Carano, but they, you know, it's just it's just crazy how they be acting <laughs> Gina up. Gina Carano. Yeah, Gina, Gina, you just some harsh terms, but I'm not going to do that. And, you know, but, uh, you know, much props to her anyway. Um but yeah, so, but we also have some cool stuff coming out. Oh, no. I think it's time for my medicine. I'm feeling sick. How about well, you? Not yet. Hold on. I got no? one more thing. No? So also, <laughs> also just uh, on Instagram, on Instagram, search the adventures of Wonder Duck. I just launched that uh, Instagram page. So get on there and uh, follow it. Follow the page. I, I'm, I post. I'm trying to post regularly and I'll have more information about the book because next year in May, I have some big news coming out for the book the continuation of uh, the adventures of wonder duck so that's indie news on my end i don't yes. know if you have any more indie news no i think now it. we need to uh, go on and get you. it's time for your medicine it's time for your medicine so i created a character what's next what is next? Miss, I want to know. What, what, what <laughs> happens after the creation of a character? The, the, the other question is, what maybe, let's start even before you created, what led to creating a, a character, right? Like, what, what were some of the things that, you know, prompted you to create this character, inspired you to create a character? And then what happens next? We, um, we did, hope, I mean, and listen, this is in the future. <laughs> so I don't know that this actually happened, but the plan was to do a, um, a panel uh, recently at EternalCon. And the panel dealt with character, right. uh, with characters and creating characters and things of that nature. So I know that when I personally, when I created um, Rust 5377, which we spoke about a little earlier, I, it started with a doodle. It started with the character. The story wasn't even there yet. I had created this character, and now I was going to create a world for him. Now, I don't know if that's the normal way, or I don't know if most people do it that way. That's the way that particular story happened. And to be honest with you, I, I don't, I work different. You know, it doesn't, I mean, it depends on the story. But for Russ uh, specifically, I created Russ first, and then I created the world around him. Is that how you work, Sam? Or do you kind of like create your story and then you start? Building it, building it with cap, filling it with characters, and then building the characters from there. Uh, it's, uh, for me, it's always started with the character. Yeah. Uh, and I worked my way back. Um, working my way back to you, babe. Nice. With nice. a burning love inside. Anyway, so um, yeah, usually, <laughs> <laughs> like like Forbidden started with sin. The yeah, nail in yeah. my toilet. Uh, it started with the title. Yeah, yeah. See, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's you know, it varies it, yeah, it varies because yeah, that started with the yeah. title. I remember, I remember going to the Lincoln Tunnel and it hit me. Pong, there's a nail in my toilet. So, you know, <laughs> so uh, 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 Cosmic War started with Gorf. It started yeah. with Cosmic Gorf. Yeah. And um, uh, and uh, let's see. I think uh, yeah. So Forbidden started with Sin. Yeah. Um, so it starts with the character. It, yeah. So when it starts with the character, right? What happens next? What happens after the character? For you, what happened after the character? For me, it's the questions. Mm. Who is he? Right. How did he become who he is? What were some of the life experiences that got him to this point? What were some of the decisions that he made? Who were the, the influences in his life? Who were his arch rivals? You know, so it starts with me asking all these questions. You know, I think, you know, when I create the character, like Sin, when I created Sin... It start. It was the name. Why is his name Sin? And I worked my way backwards. That can't be his birth name, you know. And so I was. I was almost as like I was challenging myself and my thoughts, and I was questioning me. And in this process, um, you know, with this nail in my toilet, it started with this nail in my toilet, and then it went into um, duty, and so it just was fitting to give him his name, duty. And then it was, um, who is he? Why is he the way he is? Um, why is he on earth? Why did he come to earth? 
there's got to be a store back so it's like there's got to be a backstory in order to tell the present story yeah you know what i'm saying and somehow they got to link up you know so like with duty you know he really is an outcast but he thinks he's a superior intellect but he the people are actually laughing at him um not with him and you know so he sent to earth as a reason to get away get them get him away from them um his people and um but he thinks he's on the most important mission in the world right right and so in reality he's always getting his butt whooped um uh, but in his mind in fantasy he conjures himself up to be this superior being um and that's where the, the comedic aspect comes in i think with sin it was you know that that son that thinks he knows better the son that challenges authority challenges the father the son that really is influenced by a love right it's you know that 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 girl that says why do you what do you have to listen to your father why do you have to do this why do you, do you know and um so it's just what is the conflict in it what is the purpose of the character what is the goal of the story and so i have to be able to take those into components and ask answer those questions as i'm listing them yeah, I think that for me with Russ, for example, when it started out as just like a doodle on a page, it wasn't, he didn't look human. Right. Right. He did, well, he didn't look like a, like a regular human being. He, he had, had a noggin. Like big eyebrows. He was bald. He had a big head, right? Yeah, like so a like, hunchback okay. in Notre Dame. Yes, yeah, so I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm like, okay, what happened to this character? Why does he look this way? Right. And in asking that question, I created, okay, well, maybe it's a deformity that happened to him at birth and maybe he you know has to deal with that but i didn't want to make his appearance like a detriment to him so i gave him powers like he's you know telekinetic abilities he's got this big head and you know he's just so i think that the look of the character also kind of dictates and the questions that you ask dictates who this character is and what his story is going to be. Now, how do I make that into a story? How do I put all of these things together and then give him a story? You know, I, I have to give him a cat. I have to give him friends. Let's create some of these friends. And who are these guys? And then I think about, like you said, almost like their background, right? Like I think about uh, the first 10 years of his life. What were they like? And create a story and just write something that may not even see it into the book, but at least you know, so that you can pull from that. Or whenever you're creating situations, you can pull from that history. You know what I mean? And things like that. So I think that when you're creating a character, it's about asking questions and knowing, getting to know your character, knowing this character as if it's a real person. Yeah. Who is this person? What makes him tick? Why does he do the things he does? It's like what you were saying about duty, right? He thinks this is happening, but it's not really that. And it's because of his ego. So you give him an ego. You know, he's egotistical. Um, I think that that's part of the character. And character is important in a story because that's that that's the driving force, I think, in any story. Because you have to care about those characters in order for you to keep reading that book. Otherwise, you're not you're going to stop reading. Right. You know? and, and I think, you know, you have to have, I mean... Like duty is a comedy, and um, for me, when I was create, it, it was almost as if the alien became my narrator. Like duty dictated what happened. You know, it was like, all right, there, there's several scenes in the woods, and he's you know dealing with wolves and and uh, bears and turtles and squirrels and woodpeckers and ants, but then he gets into a house and now he has a chihuahua named Herman, who happens to be, you know, Mexican Chihuahua. And Herman has an accent. And uh, so, and Herman thinks he's a talking jalapeno. You know, and it's just, it, it, it was the comedy. Um, but wherever he went, there was always a rival. If he was in the woods, he had, he had a rival. If he's in the house, he has a rival. You know what I mean? So it was like, but what was the purpose of that rival? And how important were they to the story? Right. You know, uh, are they just um, uh, fillers? Or are they key characters, right? So, like, in the woods, they were fillers. You know, in the house, there are key characters. You know, the dad and the son. The chihuahua, you know. Um, you know, so it's like, why are, what is the, per so I guess for me, it was like, what's the outcome? The outcome was he sent to Earth on a recon mission to determine for a threat to his home world. The real story behind it was he was sent to Earth as a means to get out of the hair of the general 
so that the general can focus because he's a nuisance. The only reason why the general has to watch over him is because he's the son of the ruler of Uranus. Boom. So, all right. So now he just sent the oil. So then, all right, he gets to Earth. Now what? Right? So, and then, and then so it's really about duty's um, journey, um, you know, and to Earth. But I think the story where, where it has heart it's the relationship that he has with the characters he meets on earth. That's where well, the heart begins. Right. And and, that, and that's the thing. Like when, whenever you have a character that you as a creator fall in love with it, he allows you or he, he dictates what other stories you write about him or what other stories you create. Right. Because like you said, that there's an alien in my toilet duty in that story sparked the, you know that 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 inspiration to create another story. Hi, I'm Duty from Uranus. Tell to tell a little bit more about him, and that spun off. You know, like the Christmas special, and right. that, and that spun. So it it just heard, keep, that spun off Herman. Herman, right? Like he he's got his own story coming it's to like America. Yeah, <laughs> it's almost like what happens with 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 all that stuff is that these characters, just the creation of those characters, keep you creating. You know because. But you have to know your character and you have yes. to develop that character to the point where it becomes so real that he can literally or she can literally be standing next to you and you can have a conversation with that character. Yes. Which ends up happening as you're writing. You're communicating with them. You're talking in their language. You're talking in their voice. You're, yes. you're, you're, what would that, what would my character do right now? And because it becomes so real, we almost, so we almost go crazy. Right, because you're you're doing these things, yeah. but that's what happens when you're creating a character, and I think character development is very important in any story because without it, yes, you know, you just don't. You, nobody wants to turn the page. I don't care what happens to this character. Yeah, I, I think if care. you're writing from the heart and you're writing, um, um, and you're passionate about what you've created, um, then people will embrace it. I think when you're writing to follow trends, you lose something in there. I mean, how many how many copycats are there when you have like, for instance, when you have a great sci-fi movie that comes, like when Star Wars came out, everybody was doing sci-fi, right? Mm -hmm. You know, when Minority Port Report came out, everybody wanted to do things um, with that genre. You know, The Matrix. The, Matrix, the Matrix came out. Came everybody out. started doing, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, but the copycats are not the authentic one. You know, when the guys, when that real story like E.T., when E.T. came out, um, it had so much heart and so much life. And de that's why there could never be an E.T. Part 2. Right. You know what I mean? Because it was so real. It was so genuine. It was, you know, it's, um, you know, the creator really put life into it. And it's what, it, you know, the copycats, all they're trying to do is capitalize financially. So they're not giving it the same attention and they're not giving it its purpose and they're not giving it heart. I, I think, you know, it's crazy because in today's, I guess in today's movies, and I'm going to sound like the old man, get off my lawn guy, but I just feel like, for a while now, I think CGI, you know, the fact that these computer generated, um, you know, movies, they kind of have taken the place of a good story. If I can just make your eyes pop out of your, eye, you know, out of your, out of your head because these graphics look so incredible, you don't, you're not even going to care about the story. You're not even going to care about these characters. E.T. flew on a bike, no doubt about it. Right. No doubt about it. But that isn't the thing that I remember about E.T. What I remember about E.T. is E.T. go home and when his finger lights up and the little kid touches it and that connection with those characters when he gets sick and the kid gets sick and is E.T. going to die. And I'm crying as a little kid because I don't want E.T. to die because I have this connection to this little guy who barely speaks English. But I know that he's a good guy and the love that this kid feels for him, that connection, those characters, that's what made that 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 movie a classic. Not the flight on the bike where it goes up into the moon and that's a cool it's a cool visual. Don't get me wrong. That's amazing. You're, you're, it's a visual medium. You're watching a movie. But what you love about the movie is how you felt when you watched it. You know, and that stays for with me. You. It was it was everything that happened in the bedroom and in the kitchen. It was him in the closet. It was him when he, you know, he's like, when he touched the wound, he was like, ouch. 
you know, it was those little anecdotes when he would, <laughs> when they went out trick and treating, you know, yeah. and uh, and then he it well, thought it was, the and up, then yeah. and then he seen what he thought it was his family. He's like home, home, and he's going after it. Like, no, no, <laughs> and, uh, you know. So I mean, that was, I mean, just remembering it, I'm laughing. But, you know right. what I mean? Because but it was so much hard to it. Yes. But that's the character, right? Yes. That's who he is. He yes. wants to go home. Yes. He he's you know he's he's an alien, and he doesn't belong here. You know what I mean? But he's a peaceful alien. Like, I I think that we 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 were so used to seeing like these scary aliens. You know what I mean? If there's, there's an alien, it's scary. He flipped it and said, "Nah, this is gonna be a friendly alien." And, yes. and that's the character. You know what I mean? It's about characters. I think CGI has ruined that for us. I think. Yeah, and just, I, I felt you know, that way. We movies. had that conversation the other day. I felt that the new Star Wars um, trilogy. Oh, yeah, you were talking about that. Uh, right? I like the Phantom Menace, but I think some of the other ones didn't have the same um, heart that the fir- original three had, um, which is why I'm so impressed and I'm so in love with the Mandalorian, because la- for me, for me, the Mandalorian brought it back to the original Star Wars. Mandalorian was great. The Mandalorian was beautiful from the the cinematography, the 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 the, the dialogue, um, you know, just the pacing, the emotion, the connection between, um, you know, it's almost like father and son. He, you know, it's like, you know, he he thought that the that the, he was a nuisance, but then he fell in love with him, and he felt like he had to protect him. You know, it had such a great story, and it reminded me how I felt as a kid when I first saw Star Wars. You know why I became such a big fan, and Disney figured it out. They, Disney figured out what Lucas couldn't. Lucas got was so desperate to take advantage of the new technology yeah, that he lost yeah. the main ingredient, which was for me was the heart. Yeah, um, yeah. You know because he just wanted to impress, and um, which is why I was so in love with Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings, because while Peter Jackson, you know, took advantage of the special effects. He really gave a lot of respect to J.R. Tolkien by making sure that he complemented the story um, with the characters, the character development, the character casting, you know. And um, and for me, Lord of the Rings was just beautiful, uh, you know. Which is why I'm always been impressed with Game of Thrones on HBO, because Game and <coughs> Game of Thrones was w- it is. I'm, I don't. I can't tell you how many times I close my eyes on Game of Thrones. <laughs> no, wait, wait, like it's like, with, oh, you know, it's like with Game of Thrones, and that's a good example because personally, I'm not a big fantasy dragons and all this other stuff guy. I don't. I'm. I'm that doesn't. It doesn't do anything for me. I'm not really. You you talk about you know you know the um what you call it the um Lord of the, Lord of the Rings. I, it doesn't do anything for me personally. I just don't. I I'm so, I, I don't. Blast for me. Now, I know, I know. It just doesn't do anything for me, dude. I was like, but in Game of Thrones was the same way. A, a friend of mine, she's like, yo, Game of Thrones. I was like, I don't want to watch Game of Thrones, but I'm not into that whole fantasy dragon. She's like, it's not about that. Watch the first episode and just give it a shot. I was like, all right, I'll watch it. Dude, the character development. You know what I mean? What was the, the little girl's name? I can't remember her name. Uh, um, Daenerys? No, Daenerys. No, not Daenerys. No. Not, um, not, not, not her. The, uh, the, the daughter. The daughter. The, yeah, yeah. She's, I, I can't her. remember the, the one that you know yeah. does. The assassin. As soon as I saw her, I was like, I'm gonna like this little character. Like, I, I, I can see where they're going with this character, and I was hooked on everything she was. She, she did throughout the show. The king that gets killed. The young man that gets killed. Yo, I hated him, right? I couldn't stand the guy. He was uh, a rage. Of, yo, dude, it was crazy, right? Like, but how about the single... guy that was eating the sausages, pretending it was it, it oh, after he cut his? Oh my bro. god! Yo, I can tell you right now, there was so much <laughs> rage in me, so much rage, and there were so many times there were scenes that I had to go like this and, and cover so my well face, done. and so I'm like, well yo. You know, and then and then I was getting pissed off with Jon Snow, and I was like, "Come on!" Yo. You know what I mean? It's like, it, it, it. You know, when they killed the father, oh my, the the the, the wedding, oh my god, the black wedding or whatever it was, and oh. it was like, oh my gosh. But that's character development. They Yo. develop those characters to the point where what happens next really matters. It really matters. It's yes. not just like oh, they're just doing. It this, was so. It, it was it so. Matters, it was so um powerful that you had 
It was almost like concerts, big screenings at bars and Yo, movie theaters where people, people would go. Trips. Yes. <laughs> it was crazy. Crazy. Bro. You know, and you know, I can tell you right every time I watched an episode, you don't know and the thing is you never knew what would happen. You yeah. were always on the edge of your seat. I had anxiety the night before watching it. And then when you're watching it, you're like your heart's racing, you're like, What's gonna happen? You're like mm. rubbing your teeth. It was crazy. Bro, I didn't, and I and I was late to the party because I didn't. I I binge watched like all what is it? How many seasons were there? There's seven, but I binge watched. No, there were eight seasons, right? But I been watched. I binge watched the seven seasons, just so I can see the premiere of the eighth, which was the biggest letdown <laughs> ever. But <laughs> the other, I'm talking about like it, everything. Everything they did. Um, in the show just seemed to work. <laughs> it just seemed to work. You know, um, Peter Dinklage, uh, uh, what's his name? P uh, Peter Dinklage yes. playing uh, Tyrion, I think it was. What an amazing performance. Amazing performance, dude. Cersei. Remember Cersei? Oh, my uh, God. I was, uh, you know, what's, what's crazy is that she... In love, right? You yeah. Love. I, yeah, I mean, I, I fell in love with her in Terminator, the series. Um, uh, 300. Aria, what's the girl's name? Um, I it, it look. I was pissed off with a lot of people in that show. I was like, really, really, you know, who's gonna step up? I was like, yo, who's gonna, yo, why is this happening? And um, Arias, yeah, Ario, Arias, Aria, Aria. yeah, she was just a bad. She was, I loved her. Um, her plight, her journey, her toughness, her huspa. It was just like, she was the hero we needed. Ridiculous. Now, I wasn't happy with the ending. No, no. No. I think they did that to try to spin something, and I think they should have well, gone the with it. The books aren't even done. The yeah, aren't even I think they should have so gone with no the idea. first instinct. And, and um, you know, I think Jon Snow was the true king, but um, that's just me. That was crazy. Yeah, that it was, was just, so freaking I didn't ridiculous. understand that one. But, but the um, giant, like, yo, the, the oh, when that guy steps, oh, the, the, my man from The Mandalorian, when he, the way he gets killed. It, but here's the thing, right? You care about that death works, and and, and you're 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 like whoa about that death because of it just in that in how about two or three episodes they develop that character. How story. about when he kills his father on the toilet? Crazy. <laughs> it's like yo, yo, it was, <laughs> yeah, it, it's, you know, again, when I'm thinking about it, I'm getting anxiety now because there were there were moments where. I probably won't remember because I closed my eyes during some certain, certain scenes. Uh, I just couldn't see it. I was like, no. And I, and I was like, ah. Oh. Um, but that was brilliant, brilliant writing, brilliant cinematography, you know, just s stage set, you know, develop. You know, it was just everything. The product, it was flawless. In my eyes, they, they, they set the bar so dang high. Yeah. For, yeah, yeah. for, for future. Uh, projects on 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 cable TV. I mean, the fact that it was on HBO was just mind-boggling. Well, but see, yeah, yeah, no. But H HBO for a while has been doing shows like The Sopranos. I mean, they've been they've always been ahead of of the curve when it came to these shows, kind of thing. Because The Sopranos was a big hit. Sex in the City was ridiculous, right? Uh, but you know, growing up, you know, when that show was out. So yeah, so but and then when Game of Thrones comes to HBO, it's just it's it's insane. I just think that they they probably should they probably rushed that ending like that eighth season shouldn't have been the way they did it was just not it just wasn't the right way to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah, they I think it, totally I think it was rushed. It. I think they were trying to cater to the audience or try to, and I think they should have just stuck with whatever was the, was the first instinct. Somewhere along the line, that last, that last, the ending, somebody in the corporate office screwed it oh, up. Absolutely. absolutely, it was somebody in the corporate office all, that felt that they they had to put in their input because they had the power, and they screwed it up. You know, I was yeah. like, shut your ass, your ass is just to run the corporation and let the creators yeah. be the creatives. You know yeah. what I mean? I hate that. I see it everywhere. There's always a suit that comes out of nowhere that think they know yes. best. Shut yes. your mouth. <laughs> shut it. Shut your face. No, it, it's so true. You know, it's like, it's come so on. It's true. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's sad coming out of character. Oh, oh, you crazy. <laughs> oh, <you crazy. laughs> oh, snap. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, that's that oh, just pisses man. me off. Uh, no, I yeah. agree, man. I agree. But but like that's a that's a good example of 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 the character development um, that's needed to to keep, keep pushing a story. And I'm trying to think of, of a movie right now that that did that for me as well, where you just cared about the characters. Um, John Wick. John Wick is a good one. John you Wick love that guy. One. John Wick is a. Good you one. feel for that guy. Mm-hmm. The relationship he has with the, the love he has for the dogs. Bro, that right there, the way they set that up, right? Here's this man. Obviously, he's a killer. Obviously, this is not a good Which person. is crazy. He's, not he's an assassin, but we love him. Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. crazy. He's not a good guy. No. He, you're not supposed to like this guy. No. But his wife dies, and her, pre- her the last thing that he has from her is this little dog. And... He falls in love with the dog because it's a remind. Remember, you know, it's a reminder of her. And then these motherfuckers come into the house and kill his dog, and that's all it takes for this. Now, but now, now because they developed that, you're all in when he goes after these guys. Yes, you're all in. All like, in. We are. We are all in, buddy. Let's go get this. Guy. I mean, I love the fact that the the, the receptionist want, took care of the dog for him. Right. Like he really <laughs> liked John Wick, and he's like, "Yo, I'm gonna take care of your dog." <laughs> you know, it's like yo, it's like that. That stuff is like crazy. Or, or when um, what's his name? Um, uh, geez, what's his name? Um, the assassin that was that he was a sniper that was protecting him, and he, William Defoe, oh, yeah. William Defoe's character, oh, and yeah. he he took a hit for him. Y- you <laughs> fell for that. He's like yo, yes. that's Will. You know, it's that like yo, good. that's his boy. You know, so it's that like everybody he loved, he was losing. Right, right. So he has nothing to live for anymore. So he really doesn't care who he's going up against. That's you know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like he at this point, when he decided to go after um, the Italian guy because the Italian guy betrayed him. Oh yeah. Um, because yeah. he forced him to come back, mm. and then he knows that it's going to cause him to go up against the world. He doesn't give a damn. I got nothing left. Right. I got you. My house is gone. My boy's gone. My wife's gone. You killed my first dog. This guy's gonna watch my second dog, so he's 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 gonna be (laughs) aight. You know what I mean? It's like it's crazy. Yes. Yes. I just don't know what they're gonna do with part four because he falls off that building. My gut tells me that the um is the manager. The, it, 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 I think the manager that was he's working with him behind the scenes. Yeah, I, I wasn't a big fan of the third one. Um, oh, I love the third one. No, I know, yeah, but the first two for me were were the joint. That that those were the joints. And um, but yeah, that's that's a good example. That is a good example of of that character that you care that because of the development of it, I, I think you you care about him. Uh, I'll tell you, and I'm sure, I don't know if you've seen. It, I'm sure you have. Shawshank Redemption. Yes, I've seen that. Right, Andy Dufresne, the character, the main character in that story, for me, that that's it's a great, it's a great, it's great character development. Here's this guy who goes to jail, has is doesn't belong there, you know what I mean? But he finds a way to kind of uh, exist within that world and finds, I don't know, I guess he he makes friends <laughs> with these people who, who they shouldn't be friends and they respect them. Because of his, because of his brain, because of how smart he is, and and they end up loving him, and that's as that movie goes along, you understand. And even at the end of the movie, Red, the character Red, played by um, what's his name, um, Jesus, Morgan Freeman, and his character, like it's a character-driven story. There's no action in it. You know what I mean? It's it's you're you're sitting there for two almost two and a half hours of just these guy, of just this guy in jail, and but it's such it's such a great it's it the way it was written so great and the character is what makes you keep watching the movie and that's what it is it's, to me it's all about the character it's like goodwill hunting goodwill hunting is what i mean it amazing. was phenomenal yes you know yes. i mean you got robin williams you got you got i mean you got the uh, the cast of character relationship the dialogue the heart um yeah. it was just like <clears throat> i love that scene with robin williams where he tells him what love is yes where he breaks down love to him, he's like, "You probably read, you probably read all the sonnets that that William Shakespeare has ever written, and you still don't know what love is." Like, you know what I mean? Like, he he it, the, that scene, the way it's written, and, and kudos to these guys because those were the, that was like their first uh, screenplay. They wanted yeah, Ben Affleck you know? and uh, yeah, 
Matt yeah, Damon. Yeah. And Matt Damon, yeah. And and the way they, they, they put that together, but you're right. This kid, and you follow this guy, and you, again, when even you the, for these guys. Even the relationship know. with him and his boys, like, they knew. Oh. They're like, you, 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 we're living through you. You have to get out of here. You know, he's like, you know, when I oh, show yeah. up and you're not there. You know, I mean, it was just the dialogue. Yeah. I mean, you. I mean, I can tell you, I cried like three times in that show, that movie. It's like there's like three points in that movie where I was like, <laughs> you know, what I'm saying, it's, it's not your fault. Yes, it's not your fault. when he hugs them. When yes, he hugs them when they come out, they through. yes, he breaks through to him. Yes, yes. or when yeah. they drive up and he's not there. It's yeah. like oh. yo, and, and you and you almost like you you, and you can tell his friend root, was rooting for that. Yes, he wanted that. He said every time I come up to your house, I hope that you don't answer the door. And you do that. Like you're too smart and you're too good to be still here. Do something with your life. Get out of here. You know, and like, and even, you know, when he falls for the girl, you know, I went to see about a girl. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that was great. The lines, the, I mean, it was just brilliant. I mean, that, it, it, but it's, it's those stories with heart, you know, like Bridges Over Madison County. I mean, there's this, uh, there's yeah, this movies that are just like, they capture you. I mean, beaches. Right. Beaches, Bette Midler. I mean, that movie, I cried like a baby. I, was, I went away, baby. <laughs> oh, I was like, <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm a sob. I'm a cancer. And just so you guys know, I'm a cancer. Uh, I'm very sensitive. I look like this big, burly, likes, grizzly Adams. Else. But uh, yeah, I like gummy bears. Do you have a Kickstarter campaign and you're trying to figure out how to get the word out? You look online and you see the competition is fierce. Comic cons are slowly coming back, but in the meantime, how do you spread the word? You worked for hours creating your campaign. You post on as many social media sites as possible, trying to get the word out to no avail. Well, look no further. Why not sponsor an episode of Cast the Craze Podcast, the fastest growing indie podcast in the market today? That 30 second promo can get you an extra two to three backers or more. Who knows? Let's go. Hit the link below and get one step closer to a successful campaign. Okay, we are back with a very special guest. We have Vernon Smith. What's Hello. up, Vernon? How's it going? Awesome. How you guys doing? Sweet man, we're good. We're good. We're good. I, I like that banner in the background there. Oh, like thank you. Yep, the looking, it. looking good. Like yeah, looking good. So Vernon, for our audience, who are you and what do you do? Um, I'm an indie comic creator. Um, right now doing a book called Bigfoot Frankenstein. I've uh, written stuff in the past. I've illustrated stuff in the past. Um, also spent a few years doing some children's books because uh, like about eight, nine years ago, I did like this really messed up horror comic called Hyde and was like, all right, I got to kind of cleanse my palate of that and, uh, and shift gears and, and do something like that my little daughter would be uh, happy about instead of scared of. <laughs> right, right. So I love I love the art style and, and the, look, the look of your book. But before we get there... Let's go back to the beginning. Where we? Where did you grow up? Um, New Orleans, born and raised. Uh, I was born like about an hour away, but yeah, I've lived here since I was like one or two years old. Um, I traveled around a little bit in the country, but yeah, never, uh, never moved anywhere else. So, what were some of the things that you were into as a, a child, a teenager in New Orleans? Um, well, I mean, I, I started drawing like first grade, uh, did like my first kind of comic or, uh, you know, like storybook then. And, uh, and then like in elementary school kind of was doing like comic strips with a couple of friends of mine. And, uh, then like in high school, um, or I guess like junior high, I, uh, met up with a buddy of mine that I'd like, you know, stay friends with till present day. Um, and like, you know, we kind of got into like, skateboarding punk rock music stuff like that but then also like in the comic books too so like we would just kind of draw one page comic books um or or like kind of build on it and like work on it for like a couple of weeks and have like a whole issue and we just like kind of trade them back and forth and like show other kids in school um and yeah then kind of 
kept doing that in college instead of paying attention to the stuff I should have been, um, which would have probably led to a more lucrative career. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. And then, um, then a few years after that decided to just kind of make a go of it. And that same dude that I was drawing with in high school, it, like he handed me this book on self-publishing comics. And so like, I really, I really just got into that. Cause it was like, Oh, my thing was, cause I'd met a, a buddy of mine who like, was an illustrator for Marvel and DC. And, and I was like, okay, well that'd be cool to like get in with that. And then I could like get people liking my stuff and then kind of put out like my own thing. Um, and, but this, this kind of was just like, dude, just sidestep that. Like this, if this is what you want to do, then, then do that. Um, which it's, it's harder because you're, you're having to like build up, you know, you're having to build up like your own following just from your own stuff instead of being like, Oh, I got people that like me because I drew Superman or, you know, X-Men, something like that. Uh, I was just going to ask you, Brent, are you still friends with this guy? Because he just gave you, like, the worst advice. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just joking. No, yeah, I mean, listen, this isn't, like, an easy road, right? Like you said, no. it probably would, probably would have been, building, building a fan base would have probably been easier if you drew Superman, like you said. If you drew right. Batman, they're like, oh, Vernon, yeah, sure, man. That, oh, that's the artist that did that? Yeah, well, oh, he's got a book? Let me go check it out. But when right. you don't have that, it, it, it's kind of tough. I was reading here on your website, and I, I, you know what we told you we're gonna go back. Seven years old. This is when yeah. you first drew your first comic book. Tell us about one boat. Like this is seven years old. How, <laughs> did, did you like fold this thing and have like? How did you put this thing out? Like, tell us yeah, about that was, that whole story. Uh, it was something like from what my little bit I could remember. <laughs> um, it was. Uh, I think it must have been something that the school did because there was even like on the back cover, like it, it had like the school name on it and stuff, you know. Um, so I guess it, it must have been a project that they did because it was like it was like an orange piece of paper for the cover. And then, you know, just like some white pages thrown in there, folded and stapled in half. Yeah. But it was like bigger than just a regular sheet of paper. So, I mean, it was, you know, like maybe 11 by 14 or something. Um, and yeah so it was it was just this story about like my mom and i going down to the river because we got like the mississippi river here and you have like the old steamboats and stuff um and so it was like we went there to go watch the boats uh two of them almost crashed but then they didn't so we went home and we took a nap and then we went back the next day and we saw some more boats one of them was the natchez and one of them was the black freighter like i don't know where i got the black <laughs> freighter from uh, it was like just yeah just some spooky ass boat showed up in the <laughs> in the middle of the city or so i was like dude i want i want to know what happens next like are there like ghosts on this thing or something right, like yeah, yeah, yeah like years later like i'm reading Watchmen, and i think like that was like the kind of in-between story they had like, like tales from the black freighter i'm pretty <laughs> sure that was it the black uh, freighter that's awesome yeah dude. It's a it's amazing how creative we are when we're that young, right? Like right. how we ju we're fearless about our storytelling because we know we don't know any better. It's like right. ignorance is bliss, so we just create. It's it's freaking amazing, man. Yeah, like why couldn't I do that now? You know, right. now I'm trying to come up with stuff I'm like ah, and but it's it's like it's even if I wrote something like a year or two ago and I get to like kind of working on stuff because usually like if I have something in mind like I'll, I'll write just like a ton of it in a notebook and just like kind of fill it up and then i'll go back so that i've got like stuff to kind of draw on so i'm not just sitting there looking at a blank page um and like and i'll read stuff that like i'd written like a year or two before and and i, I forgot where i'm going with it i'm like oh this is kind of cool and oh man that's funny how come i'm not funny like that now like i couldn't <laughs> read that now and it was only two years ago so it's like yeah the stuff from when i was seven Genius. Genius, right? You're a freaking little genius back when you were seven. So mm -hmm. did you do that now? Did you see right. did you did you read a comic um when you were a kid um that inspired you to create the comics? What was it? Where was that influence? Where did it come from? Um when I was a kid it was mostly like comic strips, you know. Right. Like I, I, I just remember reading like Garfield and whatever was like in the Sunday papers and stuff, and then like uh had like the collected Garfield books and stuff. Um and yeah, and, and that was that was kind of some of the stuff that like me and my friends in elementary school would just kind of rip off and, and change it a little bit. But like we came up with our own characters, but the story was completely 
pretty much stolen from the stuff that we were reading at the time. <laughs> we, well, well, we didn't have the genius then in the writing, you know, it was just like, Oh, we could come up with these characters. And, uh, but yeah, then we would just like plagiarize other people's stuff, but change it a little bit. To yeah, where... the, character, the characters look different, but the stories are all the same. It's, it's yeah. yeah. We, it, we might change like the punchline, you know? So it's like, you know, <laughs> uh, yeah. Queen song was din, 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 din. But mine is din, 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 din. Din, 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 din. <laughs> totally different song, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's freaking funny. Right, now, do you consider yourself an artist that writes or a writer that draws? What, 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 what's because you do both, right? So, what, yeah. what, do you, what do you lean towards? Hmm. I guess I'm a letterer that could write and draw. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm a, like lettering is my thing that I really, really love. Um, but now I guess. I I love drawing more. Yeah. Um. Just like the the act of doing it, and it's like more fun to show. But like, yeah, writing it's it's kind of more, I guess, intellectually or like emotionally kind of mm. soothing to do because it's like, oh, I can create all this all this cool stuff. So if I had to if I had to pick one. I guess like the the vain part of me would go with artists because it's like oh that's what you see and that's right. like if someone sees something that I did and they're like oh that looks so cool then be like all right yeah it's cool but <laughs> like not a lot of people would be like uh, like if someone's like oh can you draw this for me no one's gonna be like oh hey can you write a sentence for me <laughs> right <laughs> um, true. true yeah that is true so, yeah so the main part of you is like yeah i'm an artist man i'm an artist who just likes to write but uh, you really so you consider yourself a letter is that is that from like your background in, in in fine arts and like and like that that side of that yeah and and like studying some comics like when i was younger like uh you know seeing stuff from like the 80s and 90s um you know like some of the independent comics too where they like really kind of work the lettering into the art, um, you know, like, especially if it's like a sound effect, like everything now, it's just like a font and, uh, which I'll like, I use fonts for the actual lettering and stuff, but like for, if it, if it's like a, a sound effect kind of thing, I always try and just like draw that in. So that it's kind of like part of the whole page, you know? Gotcha, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, but, and, and just like kind of studying the way, like, placing the word balloons and stuff like that that's something that i do even when i'm just doing like the rough layouts of the page right it's i i gotta know like where all the dialogue's gonna be flowing to kind of like you know move like the reader's eye in the right direction so it's not like oh they're reading something here but there's like a big action thing up in the top corner you know but i got the dialogue in the bottom corner so you're not even seeing all that stuff that i spent this time on so it's just <laughs> like kind of using it to sort of direct the eye yeah. No, no, I, I hear you 100% because I, I do a lot of lettering for my books as well. And like, oh, cool. it, it's an art form in itself, right? Because yeah. you don't want to, it, it's almost like it, it's got to be silent in a way. You know what I mean? Right. Like it's, it almost has to not be there. You can't notice it. You have to still see the artwork, but you still have to be able to read those words. So it's kind of like you have to find that, that medium. So I totally understand where you're coming from with that. And that's part of the fun of it, right? Figuring it out. Right. Like that, that's totally part of the fun of, of the whole thing. So I, I'm a hundred percent with you on that and looking at your pages. I mean, definitely, I mean, you, you definitely achieve that when, when you're doing this. I, I love the cocoon, like when, when <laughs> the, the lightning is, is, is blasting, you know, like it, that's, that's really, really, and, and that actually looks like it's going into the, into that kind of like the drawing, like you're talking about, like when the right. lightning strikes and you see the words, they kind of, kind of go into that whole lightning right. strike. So that, that, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. That, that, I figured that way it, yeah, it just becomes a part of it, you know, mm -hmm. instead of just typing big giant letters across <laughs> when, you know. Uh, yeah, no, 100% agree, 100% agree. But but tell us a little bit about, so, okay, so now you, you, you're, you, you're into your whole, you know, self-publishing, you're, you're, you're now self-publishing fully. What was the first book that you self-published other than what you were doing in high school? Where, when did you actually start it? You know, let me take this a little more, more serious. Let me, let me see if I can get this thing published. And then you, you went out and did it. Uh, uh, well, there was two. The first one I tried doing um, was it was this comic called Port Authority, and it was about like superheroes in the real world. Like you know, they weren't 
they weren't wearing like capes and tights and masks and stuff like that. And they didn't have code names. They just like kind of had like, you know, uniforms and, uh, but they're, they're uh, you know, it's like these, these, they were former government experiments and then they broke loose and they became their own thing. But, um, but their, their thing was like, yeah, we could help you, but you got to pay for it. You know, so mm-hmm. it's like, it, oh, you, you're stuck in a burning building. Hold on, let me swipe your card and see if it's going through before I come up and save you. Uh, <laughs> wow, mercenaries at that, like at the highest level, right there. Right, yeah, <laughs> but they're like, you know, also superheroes at the same time. Um, mm. And so, like, I I did that, and I was like, all right, I'll I'll uh, you know, I'll pitch it to Diamond because that's like the the main comic distributor, you know, pretty much in the world. Um, especially at the time, I mean, this was like early two thousands and, um, but it was like, you know, I'd read all about like the, the old self publishing stuff of like the eighties and early nineties where it was like, Oh, anyone could do this. You know, that's where the Ninja Turtles got started from and like bone and stuff like that. Um, so I was kind of going off of, you know, stuff from like 15, 20 years old, uh, but trying to apply it in like, you know, early two thousands. And so it's like, all right, let me. I'll get the whole book done and I'll get it printed up. And this was like right before kind of print on demand comics happened. So it was like, I found a place to print up like 2000 copies of the book. Cause I was like, I'm gonna go to Dymo with a complete thing. And they're going to be like, Oh, this kid's for real. Like, and so we were going to be impressed with them. And they turned it down. <laughs> oh, boy. So you're sitting on 2000 books. Yep. <laughs> Oh, brutal. So, so when Katrina hit, I was like, thank you, Jesus. Wow. <laughs> um, mm. uh, yeah, like, so I, I was I was selling some just at, like, you know, indie comic conventions and stuff. And uh, so then, like, a couple of years later, um, like, I pulled back and I, I did, like, another one that was called, like, The Adventures of Dexter Breakfast. And it was, like, kind of more cartoony with, like, this uh, – little wombat cowboy and his talking dog sidekick, but they're tossed into the old West with like real people and stuff. Um, and then that one actually did get picked up. So it was like, okay, now I can go ahead and print this. So it's like, <laughs> so I figured that since that was like the first one picked up by the distributor and, you know, like putting comic shops across the country without me having to bring them. Um, I guess that would be like my, my actual first kind of breakthrough comic. Yeah. That's amazing, man. So, so Diamond picked it up. So you, you pitched it to them, like you send it out to them, and they, they said, all right, yeah, well, we'll distribute this. Yeah. Yep. Nice. So I put out, like, uh, two graphic novels. Because, um, like, I, I, at first it was going to be, like, single issues. Mm-hmm. But, uh, like, the, the it wasn't, like, you have to sell a certain amount for yeah. them to keep, you know, um, carrying it. And, uh and so it's like just for like a little two or three dollar book, like it wasn't pulling in the numbers to where like the money would be like. So they were like, well, if you put it out as trades, you know, you're going to sell a lot, you know, if, if you only sell like a hundred of them, but they're like, you know, 18, 19 dollar books, that's a lot better than selling a hundred like three dollar comics. So you, you'll be closer to like hitting the money. And I was like, all right, cool. So I did that, put out a couple of those books. Um, and then, uh, then after that, did another one called like, Return to Love and Dead. That was like in two thousand about ten years ago, two thousand ten, two thousand eleven. Um, and I was like making fun of like the celebrity reality love shows at the time, like Rock of Love and Flavor of Love and all that stuff. Flavor but um love. instead of like, you know, a uh like an old eighties musician that was like in a house full of girls, this was like a, a has been celebrity zombie <laughs> who was like in a house full of girls and and they're just doing all the stuff that you would see like in the, you know, like in the VH1 shows, but they're fighting for a guy who's just going to end up eating them one day, you know? <laughs> uh, and, and like the, the main character was the dude, like, do you ever see uh, the original night of the living dead? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, so it's the main dude that's, that's in the movie who like gets shot at the end of the movie, you know, cause yeah. they think he's a zombie. Mm-hmm. But so like, so I took him and it was like, all right, well, it turns out, he didn't get killed, um, but they thought he was dead, so they tossed him into the fire. So that's what actually killed him. So then he did come back as a zombie, and it was like, and and he became like the celebrity zombie because like 
he had, they uh, they had to like go to court to to like fight for his rights as like an undead person, and 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 then um and then it's like he was in like you know uh, then he became like a celebrity, and I was like doing little like montages of him being in like different movies from like the seventies and eighties, like dolomite and bachelor party and stuff like that <laughs> and um and so then now it's like you know 2010 and, and he's like you know he's like 60 years old and a zombie and, the, and there's like these 20 year old girls with like hardly any clothes on just like you know backstabbing each other like like new york and stuff like that would do and um and god i, f- I forget all the other girls that were on these shows but like wasn't there a girl named hoops or something hoops oh yeah oh, other girls yeah, hoops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. um God, who else? I, I forget. Even like, yeah, but I, I watch like all the Flavor of Loves and the Rock of Loves, like Brett Michaels and stuff. Um, oh my God. And, and, and back I was, with that stuff. Holy cow. Did right. you, so, so you put that out as a graphic novel? Is that what you did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. I put that through Diamond too. Um, wow. And then, uh, what was the, uh, oh yeah, so so I had a daughter right around then. So I was like, all right, let me pull back and, and um, you know, concentrate on her for a couple of years and then like around 2013 i did this book called hide that was uh it was like this horror comic where everyone over the age of 18 wakes up one day and wants to kill everyone under the age of 18 um and put that out to kickstarter and uh and yeah it was it was really messed up book like there was there was stuff that like (laughs) like (laughs) Yeah, it was. It was... <laughs> like, yeah, it was just it was messed up. It was just, it was, yeah. trust me, it was messed up. Yeah, he said, like, just trust me, trust me. How, how is that a graphic novel? Also, is that was that like single? Yeah. It was a yeah, one shot so, graphic uh, novel kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, now, yeah Brett, so what, what's your style? Is is your style more cartoony or is it more realistic? Like, what what, what do you what do you like to draw? And what style do you like to draw? Um. It, it kind of depends on what I'm what I'm working on. Like that Dex of Breakfast book was definitely more cartoony. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hyde was more realistic because okay. it was like you know kind of more in the real world. And um, and with like with, with the children's books that I've done, those were kind of more cartoony, but some were kind of painted too. But with Bigfoot Frankenstein, that's a little. It's more realistic with some bits of cartoony in it just since you know because of subject matter with like a you know a piece together frankenstein version of a bunch of different big feet um i was like all right i don't have to stick too much with realism there uh so it's kind of a kind of a cartoony realism i guess like i got you i got you uh, so so yeah so so tell us a little bit about about the book so it's called bigfoot uh frankenstein now you are the artist and letterer and then the, it's written by mark uh bertolini right yeah colored by kai, kai tang so tell me a little bit about the book and, and and where the concept came from i was telling you before we came on i'm a big fan of uh mary shelley's frankenstein so tell right. me tell me tell me about the the concept and the story and, and how you came up with it all right um it's the story of like the great 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 whole lot of greats grandson of dr frankenstein um and he's hiking through the woods one day stumbles upon a pile of dead big feet stitches them together harnesses the power of lightning and creates a new best pal uh the two hit the road in a hearse trying to find out who's killing all the bigfoots um so mark came up with the idea and he had a he had friended me on Facebook like a couple of years ago and just like out of the blue. And, um, and I was like, I know that name sounds familiar. And so like, you know, I looked him up and I was like, Oh, I got one of his books on my bookshelf. Like he had done, <laughs> you know, like a, like an indie comic through Kickstarter too. Um, or like a, an anthology and he had written a story and I was like, Oh yeah, I remember that. I was like, and I actually, I like that story. So I, I, and then it was like, oh, you know, like, no lie, like I actually did like it, and uh, and so I hit the dude back up, and I was, I was like, dude, yeah, I got your book, I like your stuff. Um, he's like, all right, cool. He's like, I I got I got some ideas for some stuff, and one of them I think would kind of fit with your style, and um, and he and he's like, it's called Bigfoot Frankenstein. And I was like, dude, you sold me on the title. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, um, and and I was I was doing like a children's book, and then also. Uh, like a, it was kind of a, a Spanish comic book of like teaching 
teaching uh, Span uh, Spanish to English. Like, it was a Spanish teacher that, that I, like, met through someone to someone else. And um, and she's like, yeah, I want to do this book. And but it's, like, it's it's a teaching book, but also, like, have some comic book pages in it, too. So I'm working on these two things. And they were cool, but I was like, dude, I want, I want to get back to this book. Like, this, this is the one I was, like, <laughs> fun to do. And, um, and, yeah, and then whenever I knocked out everything else, it was like, I, I just dove straight into this because it was, yeah, it was, it was way fun to do. Nice, man. Is this an ongoing series or is it, is it like one of those, you know, one shot graphic novels? What, what's the, what's um, the uh, length of the book? It's a five issue mini series and, mm -hmm. um, and all five issues are done. So it's any comic that will actually come out on time. Nice. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and yeah, uh, got picked up by action lab comics. Like, um, I'd, I'd met them. They they were set up here like at a librarian convention uh, that I was set up to do a signing at for a children's book. And then it was um, like right before the, it was like, you know, this was set up for like a month or two. And as it's coming up, I'm seeing like, you know, the head of Boom Comics saying, oh, I'm going to be in New Orleans. I'm like, wait, what? And I, and I saw so I hop on the librarian website and they have like the list of everyone that's going to be there. And it's like, every publisher pretty much you know yeah. marvel and so i'm like all right well let me uh let me get some stuff together to show like you know these guys and stuff since i'm you know wanting to get back into doing comics because i haven't done any comics in like about five years and and yeah like action lab was there and um and like you know i, I introduced myself to like the head of the company and and i was like yeah i'm just looking to pick up some work and it's like oh here's our submissions editor and so like i'm talking to her and I was, um, I was like, yeah, and actually I'm kind of doing something with this guy, Mark, that I think you guys, cause like he had done something with them or it had just gotten picked up mm -hmm. and she's like, okay, yeah, yeah, I know that book. And, and I was like, all right, well, I got something. She's like, all right, cool. Send it to me. She's like, she gave me her email. And then I went up to like New York comic-con a year or so later, like met up with her again. Um, and yeah, sent them, sent them the stuff. And a couple months later, they're like, yeah, we're, uh, want to put it out it's like sweet it's awesome man. nice 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 story it took yeah. a while though huh year yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nothing happens yeah. overnight nothing happens overnight no, no not at all not yeah. at all yeah so, uh, so tell me about that uh that picture with jay and solid bob oh that was um so they filmed uh jay and silent bob reboot here mm. and uh and like in the convention center here where they usually have the wizard comic cons they set up like the fake uh chronic con for the movie you know it's like a jay and silent bob themed comic con like in the movie and so they just put out a call to like all local comic artists you know to see if they wanted to like we'd just be basically kind of extras or like you know background characters but we would just set up our own stuff like we would at a comic convention. Um, and they had done that for like another movie a couple of years before that called uh, Supercon. And that was like an indie movie and, and they filmed the whole thing. And it was like, yeah, so we're all just hanging out, you know, cause like we're all friends here, you know, all, all like local artists and stuff. And so it was like just being at a comic convention, except for like, we're not selling anything, which is kind of like what some of them would be anyway, <laughs> if it's a show. Uh, but yeah, so um, so it's like we're all there just for like a day. It was like a fourteen-hour, sixteen-hour day, something like that, just shooting till like four in the morning, and uh, and yeah, then like around four, four thirty, Jay and Silent Bob just start going around to everyone's booths and just like taking pictures with everyone, and they're like, you know, yeah, what you got? What do you want to promote? Oh, and, shoot, nice. and uh, and so I had like. It was like, I think, I don't even know if the comic had been picked up yet. If it had, yeah, no, I think it had been. Um, but I only had like eight pages done. It's like the ones that I have on the website and we had a cover. So I just printed up like some copies of the cover and put them in like a regular comic book bag and board, you know, like wrapped <laughs> around like some Legion of Superheroes comic or whatever I had like laying around just to make it look like the actual books because uh, i was like well the movie's not going to be out for like another year or two so this way it could like you know it'll look like there's something actually there um but they 
it ended up not filming like at my table so but they still like you know they're like all right what are we holding up and i had like this children's book that i had done but i was like nah dude let's go with the comic so like they're just holding up these like two basically movie props you know just these mock comics that that's just the cover in a bag of porn. Yeah, <laughs> that's genius man that's that, that's that seven-year-old genius right there Vernon. that's that yeah. <laughs> that's that creativity right there holy cow that's awesome man what a story yeah great so yeah, the, uh, yeah. oh sorry uh, no so um where what your where's your website what are your social media handles where can people reach you oh um pretty much vernon draws like across the board like my website is vernondraws.com so it's my name v-e-r-n-o-n and draws because that's what i do um <laughs> and I'm Vernon Draws on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and Twitter. And I try and update those regularly, but it's not as regular as I would like. Uh, and it's like every now and then I'll just, I'll, I'll hit one and sometimes the other, and then I might forget about another one. And then I might post something to like my personal Facebook page and I'll forget about the art page. And so, but I mean, if you find me just Vernon Smith on Facebook, it's you, you can see the same stuff there too. Um, where where but, can you get the book? Where can we pick up the uh, the 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 uh, Bigfoot Frankenstein? Um, so the first issue is in the Diamond Previews catalog that came out last month, okay. um, and so you can pre-order it now. It, it's going to hit shops like September 29th. So I've just been saying October. You know. Okay. Uh, okay. And uh, so that'll hit shops in October. And then, like, the second issue is in the previews catalog that just came out today. And that's going to be hitting at the end of October, so, like, November. Um, so, nice. yeah, I mean, people could uh, go to their comic shops and be like, I want Bigfoot Frankenstein. It's from Action Lab Comics. It's on page 239 of the <laughs> July catalog. Um, <laughs> will do. Don't worry about it. I will do that at my local at my local comic book shop, man. Definitely going to get you great. in there, man, for sure. 100%. Yeah, and I've... I've definitely been calling shops up in New York too, um, to, to try and try and pitch it too. And yeah, some of them have been like really cool. Um, uh, and I'm, I'm trying to get up there for New York comic con in October too. Nice. Uh, nice. Yeah. Do that, man. Check out if you get, when you get a chance and this is a big shout out to, uh, the, uh, spiders web in Yonkers, just mm -hmm. uh, call them up. Paul is in, is the owner of the shop. Just uh, tell uh -huh. them that you have a book. Uh, called Bigfoot uh, Frankenstein, and that you were on our show, Catch the Craze. Guy's really cool. Just so okay. you can, yeah. Place so, Paul at Spider's Web and Yonkers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just give him a call. Yeah, check that All out. All right. But, nah, thank you so much, uh, Vernon, for being on the show and uh, uh, talking to us about your passion, man. I love this. I, I love the stories. We're definitely going to have to keep in touch. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Stuff. I'll be on whenever you want. Um, thanks for having me. I hope it didn't ramble on too much. I kind of. Ah, you're yeah, good. That's it. <laughs> Good. All right, Vernon. Well, listen, have a good night. Enjoy the rest of your evening, and uh, we'll talk soon, man. All right, cool. Thanks so much. You got it, buddy. Bye, brother. Take care. All right. Later. All right. That was uh, Vernon Smith. And Vernon Smith. Uh, that was another good episode uh, on Catch the Craze podcast. Yes, sir. So, um, again, if you like this episode, hit that thumbs up. Um, please subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe, share, like it, share with a friend. And, um, and don't forget if you want to get on the show, if you're an artist, creator, any creative in any, um, you're an independent in anything you do, hit us up. We'll put a spotlight on you and don't forget to subscribe. Even the guests, don't forget to subscribe to Cast the Craze podcast. We need to grow this bad boy so we can, um, get more exposure for all our guests on the show. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Thank you, everyone, for watching, and we're going to see you next week. Yes, and I am Santa Cruz Mavera. George, you are Medina. And we are out. Oh, oh, so it's just easy. It's just not. Crazy. No, I'm talking about crazy. my friend, Aquis. I met him the Say my name, say my name. Right? <laughs> <laughs> this is what you were thinking? Oh, oh my God. God. Yeah. Yeah. He said, I'm the <laughs> You're listening what? to Catch the Craze. You're listening to Catch the Craze. You're listening to Catch the Craze. You are listening to Catch the Craze. Catch the Craze. You're listening to Catch the Craze.